This idea was put by me to President Putin and President Zelensky in a visit that started in Ankara. So I came to Ankara, had a meeting with the President Erdogan, where we defined a, a common strategy, and then I went to Moscow, I went to um, uh, Kyiv. President Erdogan spoke with both presidents, and this uh, was uh, the beginning. And then, of course, Turkey uh, was absolutely essential, uh, essential for political reasons, the commitment of Turkey, but also for geographic reasons. Uh, without Turkey, it would be completely impossible to organize this uh, uh, initiative on the, the Black Sea. You've undertaken a tremendous amount of shuttle diplomacy throughout the war in Ukraine since it started. You've visited Ukraine. You've also visited Russia. And do you see a diplomatic end to this war? Will this war end with signatures and handshakes or missiles and bullets? Well, I'm not a prophet, uh, but I feel that we are still far uh, from the possibility of uh, peace. I see the positions uh, uh, still very uh, different, uh, and um, uh, uh, I believe uh, it will take a lot of time and uh, uh, eventually uh, uh, many changes in the, the present situation to allow it to be possible. But the UN and our good offices will always be available uh, for uh, peace, uh, for local ceasefires, uh, for support to uh, exchange of prisoners, uh, for whatever, uh, uh, for the guarantee that uh, human rights are respected, prisoners of war, are treated in line with the, uh, the Geneva Conventions. I mean, all these things are things that, uh, and not to mention, of course, the huge uh, mobilization of our capacities in support of the Ukrainian people from the humanitarian point of view. What is it going to take to get President Zelensky and President Putin across the table from each other? That, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I think we are not yet there. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, two heads of state uh, have a particularly important role, but uh, uh, I think it's probably too early for that to happen. One last question. United Nations General Assembly next month, and obviously the war in Ukraine is going to dominate the agenda, but what are the other major pressing issues that you expect to be talked about at the UNGA? Oh, don't forget that we have a dramatic problem of food insecurity. Uh, we have uh, a dramatic problem of uh, energy markets being uh, completely uh, out of uh, what could uh, be acceptable. Uh, and this puts developing countries in an extremely difficult position. They had the COVID. Uh, there was not an uneven distribution of vaccines. There was not an uneven distribution of resources for the recovery. So developing world is suffering, and of course, with the present situation, suffering in even more. And we need to mobilise the international community uh, from the point of view of food, energy, and finance uh, to better support developing countries. Then we have climate change, uh, for which we are not yet there. Uh, uh, we still risk uh, uh, to, uh, instead of a reduction of emissions uh, that is absolutely necessary uh, uh, until the end of this decade, a drastic reduction. Of emissions, we still see emissions growing. So climate change is more and more an emergency to all of us. So all these issues uh, will, of course, together with uh, many aspects in relation to the situations of conflict around the world, uh, will be inevitably in the discussions of the General Assembly.